On Friday the 13th, Jason is back, but this time, someone's waiting. Today we're looking at Friday the 13th, Part 7, The New Blood, Ultimate Jason Voorhees Figure by NECA. Let's get to it. I know a lot of fans have been excited to finally get their hands on this figure. This Friday installment is pretty important for a lot of fans, not because the film was particularly great, but this is the first appearance of Kane Hodder as Jason. Most fans love the body language Kane brings to Jason, and apparently the studios liked it too because Kane goes on to play Jason on the next three Friday outings after the new blood, making Kane the person to play Jason the most. So as you can imagine, the hype was pretty real for this figure to come out to finally get their hands on a NECA Ultimate Kane Hodder Jason. So with that little background, let's get to the figure. First taking a look at the packaging, loving this movie art and the window packaging as always on these ultimate figures. On the back, it, inc it shows what's included in the package. It includes an interchangeable head, alternate mask, brush cutter, wood cutter, sickle, knife, tent stake, machete, and axe. So as you can see just by reading the box, NECA did not skimp on the accessories on this one. There are so many accessories. I really feel like I got my money's worth this figure right off the bat just looking at what comes in the package. But let's take a little bit of a deep dive on some of the specific things that come with it. The brush cutter is a unique one. That comes from a specific uh, kill in the movie, which is pretty unique to the series. I'm not sure if I'll be posing my Jason with this, but the fact that I have a brush cutter now is uh, pretty interesting for my collection. Moving on to the wood cutter. This was in a couple scenes in the movie as well, followed by our machete. You cannot have Jason without a machete. We got a sickle, which is great. Very good shine on these weapons. That metallic shine. It's not missing from anything. And a butcher knife. Um, I don't recall the scene he uses a butcher knife, uh, but can't go wrong with an extra butcher knife. If you have a Myers laying around, maybe you broke one or lost one, you get a, you get a butcher knife in here too. And the tent post. Tent stake, I guess. This was in kind of the missing scene in the film. Kind of the, our first hint that Jason was around. Then we get two hands. Kind of a reaching hand. With that normal swivel, swivel wrist. And then we have a small gripping hand, probably be for the tent stake, the knife, all that good stuff. And then we here, here's a pretty unique thing that we got here. Interchangeable head, but with the broken mask. So it kind of has the uh, exploding mask thing going on when you finally see Jason's face in this movie, which is a, a pretty cool scene. Kind of, I love how they change Jason's face throughout each film, but it's always fun. I just love the love the crack and just how it explodes off the face. It's pretty cool, and it's actually detachable. Not if you'd ever need this. Maybe if you were having him fight, posing without mask on. There you go. And then here, it uh, clips right on the back there with a little little nub there that fits right in the back of the head sculpt. And this is pretty cool. You could actually uh, recreate some other things. You could have him getting smacked in the face with something or even throw it on a different Jason. If you wanted to try to pull off some cool figure photography, this is a pretty neat accessory. I love it. And if you remember in uh, Jason Goes to Hell, Freddy's uh, arm comes up and grabs half of the mask. You could actually recreate this with this half of a mask if you wanted to without damaging any other figures. So that's pretty cool. I think this is a very unique accessory. Well, I welcome that. And then finally, we have his axe. I'm not going to take that out just because it's in a nice place and I like this pose typically. And then his mask is also removable as well. 
if you want to add another mask to the accessories. And those are the accessories. Now let's move on to the figure itself. Much like the appearance of Jason in the film, this is a huge character with a hulking presence. So we'll do a little comparison with a couple of the Jasons I have close by. He's right up there in bulkiness with the remake Jason right here, which I think is one of the biggest Jasons that they put out. And he's a little thicker than Jason from Part 4 which is, uh, I think, also a big Jason. <laughs> so you can see he has those a lot thicker legs and his trunk is a little thicker. And to kind of zoom in on a little bit, he actually has some really cool details on his body sculpt as well. This is actually a rubber uh, de decaying clothes, which is so cool because it can actually show off some of the body parts, some of the body molds. This is a highly, highly, highly detailed molded figure. Like, everything you'd think this is hard plastic but it's not this is molded rubber you could pull this away which just shows how much extra they went into this one pant legs pulls apart that rubber super super cool and the chain around his neck from that aftermath in part six Just very, very cool detail. See the bones. Can pull each piece of the cloth back and expose some new body part. Super cool. And on the back, it has that awesome spine detail there. Just wow. Very cool, very cool. More of that rubber. Just really poseable and malleable so you can just see the kind of detail on this guy. Very cool. What's also very cool is leaving a like and subscribing to this channel if you're enjoying the figure content. I have a lot more horror related content planned and would love to know if you're enjoying it so far. Moving on to the articulation, it is solid. He has a double jointed elbow so you can pull off my favorite wind up post for Jason, that axe. Just so cool, that momentum that you can get when you have that double jointed elbow. You can really see it. It's a... Uh, See, that would be your typical turn without the double joint. But getting that double joint back, the head moves all around. Obviously, it's on that ball joint. Works really well. I, I enjoy the head sculpts that are on these ball joints. You can really get some good movement. Very free moving. Rotates the chest up here. You can get some really nice poses. Knee goes back. Not sure why I'd need to go that far back, but get it back there. Boots swivel like normal. It is, it is a little stiff. I did run this under hot water to loosen these up a little bit, but they're still a hair, a hair stiff. But they swivel just fine. And he's very solid, so he stands just fine. So that's an easy stand. And that's the body and articulation. Great as usual. Overall, this is another great addition to your Jason collection. They are slowly but surely getting through them all, so hopefully we don't have to wait too much longer for the last few. I'd really like to see Jason Takes Manhattan. Hopefully that's next. Even though it's one of the weakest in the series as far as quality, I think the Jason in that movie looks super, super cool, and I love the yellow tint to the mask in that movie. I think it's so cool. I would love to see a Jason Takes Manhattan NECA Ultimate coming up soon. And as always, I've included some figure photography highlighting this figure on some of my dioramas and just some static poses. So if you enjoyed this video or you like the photography, please leave a like, comment, or consider subscribing. It really helps me out, and I really hope you enjoy the content. Thanks for watching.